Now that you know nearly everything about the modulation system, it's time to check the modulation sources. As usual, you can just place your mouse cursor over a modulation source button and press F1 or Ctrl and H to get information about that source. I have already shown one of the eight envelopes. Extremely versatile, technically a DAH DSR envelope, which probably isn't even a thing. It also features a sustained stage tremolo and custom shapes. And it can be freely re-triggered by any modulation source. Next, there are eight attack modulators. These are sort of like envelopes, but only with a custom shape and no sustain so you can just draw what happens in the beginning of each note. Great for designing initial transients. Then there are eight LFOs, low frequency oscillators. Classic Melder oscillator goodies are available here as usual. But first, there's the transform panel, which lets you do some pulse width modulation and other nasty things to the oscillator shape. And there's the follow note frequency panel, which lets you turn this into a high frequency oscillator following the frequency of the note being played. Some extreme stuff inspired by the analog modular synth. You may have noticed that several parameters of the LFO itself can be modulated as well. And technically, you can even modulate the LFO by itself. Whatever madness that would be for. Next, the four random modulators. While LFOs are repeating, random modulators aren't. Great for adding some further analog character, for example. Mm -hmm. 
key scale 1 and 2 let you somehow change the sound based on which key is being pressed. By default, the scaling is linear, meaning the higher the key, the more modulation, but you can draw any shape really. Velocity, scale 1 and 2 follow the velocity of the note being pressed. And again, you can transform it any way you like. These are all the essential modulation sources, but there are many more without any settings. Let's check them out from a parameters modulation matrix. There are several sections of modulation sources. The first one, attack, we already talked about. Next one is controllers, and as the name implies, these are various available MIDI controller values. There's no need to explain what modulation wheel or pitch bend is, but it's a good time to introduce the MPE, the Multidimensional Polyphonic Expression. Sounds scary, but it's really not. It only means that if you press a key, you can then do further motion to the key and do that differently for each key you hold. So instead of touching some knobs, you are moving your fingers somehow, for example. First, you can change the pressure. That is quite common, even with standard keyboards. That one is available via the aftertouch and pressure controller, and the other one with postfix def1. So let me attach it and play a note. Now I start changing pressure and see what happens. When I hold two keys and play with the pressure of just one of them, only that one will be modulated. Easy, but what's with the DEF1 version? The problem is, what if the MIDI controller doesn't have a pressure control? I'm now modulating the transformation, so everything is fine. If there's no pressure control, the user won't simply be able to modulate it. But what if I add another source to row A, an LFO for example? And the idea is that the user would control the amount of the modulation with the pressure. Right now, if my controller wouldn't provide pressure control, there wouldn't be any modulation at all because the pressure would always be zero and multiply that with the LFO, well, you have zero. So instead I can choose the other one with the postfix DEF1, which defaults to one. With this one, the LFO would work normally, even if the user doesn't have a pressure control. Another important control for MPE is pitch bend. In most cases, you don't really need it since M Sound Factory would automatically do what it's supposed to do change the pitch. But perhaps you want to change the sound characteristics with the pitch. And how does this look on an MPE controller? Typically you slide the finger over the keyboard and the final one MPE controller is the timber. On most controllers it is detected by the horizontal position. In other words you slide your finger towards or away from yourself. And that's all when it comes to MPE support. To make an instrument which supports MPE, you simply need to attach pressure and timber to some parameters so they influence the sound nicely. That's all. Back to the modulation sources. Next category is the custom. And yes, that's correct. You can create any kind of modulation yourself. Modulation signal is just another signal like audio. Let's get back to the generator grid and add an LFO, make the output go from zero to one, and put a magical module generate custom mod after it, channel set to one. Let it mute output, since LFO isn't exactly cool to listen to. And let's modulate by custom one, the channel. and play a note. An LFO as expected. Nothing too sexy, and you can do it with the LFO modulation source, but I'm pretty sure you can imagine way sexier and crazier modulation ideas. Next section is about envelopes, and you already know that, but there's one more we didn't talk about yet. The global envelope. 
This is always used in M sound factory sounds and is usually applied on the volume, but you can use it for other things as well. In the next tutorial about voicing, we'll elaborate on it further. Next, there's the LFO and random section. You already know these. Then there are the main controllers. In order to get a great workflow, the user learns the knobs and sliders he has on its controller as main controllers in the MIDI settings. So a main controller is really just a proxy to an actual controller the user has there. And while you are likely to use it directly from the MIDI settings, you can use it here as well. By the way, there are MPE controllers which have more than the three typical controllers, the pitch bend, pressure, and timber. For instance, imagine a violin with actual pickups being fed as modulation. Next section, note. These modulation sources depend on the note itself. For example, velocity is pretty obvious. The higher the velocity, the higher the value. By the way, do you know what velocity is? It's not how hard you press the key, but how fast you do it. Just saying. Velocity off is provided by some controllers and means the same thing, just in the opposite direction how fast you released the key. You already know the velocity scale one and two. Key and key scale one and two are pretty straightforward too. The higher the key, the higher the value. Frequency may be more interesting. While it is based on the key you press, it actually defines frequency from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. That may get handy in obscure times. Note random one and two produce a random value for each note. These are great to make each note different. Note that every parameter will be modulated by the exact same amount. To show you that, let me create two oscillators. They will play the same pitch. Now let me attach note random one to the semitones parameter on both of them. I'll press the same key a few times. It's different every time, but just a single note, because the pitch is changed identically in both oscillators. Now let me attach the true random source instead. And voila, every time I press the same key, two different frequencies are played. Random every four and 16 modulation sources are similar to note random, but the value is not changed for every note. Let me try random every four source in the oscillator and play a few notes. Sequence one and two sources should be attached to multiple parameters and they always produce the same values, different for parameter. It will be used with custom unison processing. We'll get to that in another tutorial. One more category left, special. Here are some modulation sources which just don't fit anywhere. Let's take it one by one. Constant always produces one. It may get handy for more complex modulation matrices. Counter 4, 8, and 16 produce increasing sequences of that length. Let me use counter 4 with the semitones parameter as usual, so you can see what it does. Flip flop 1, 2, and 4 switch between 0 and 1 every 1, 2, or 4 notes. Let me try flip flop 2. Gate produces one while the note is held, zero after it's released. It's obviously useful only if the release time is long enough. Noise one and two produce an actual noise as modulation and it is identical for all target parameters. Same thing as I've shown with note random. and the true noise produces a different noise for every target. 
polyphony 2, 4, and 8 produce a value depending on the number of notes being held. Let me try polyphony 4 attached to the transformation depth. The more notes I play, the more transformed all of them get. Random on note produces a random value every time a note is pressed, but it is shared between all notes. Let me try that with the transformation again. Finally, time from previous press and release modulation sources measure an actual time between notes. Let me try time from previous release on semitones parameter. Now, I'll keep pressing the same key and notice how different pitches will be played depending on the gap between the notes. It's possible that in your release, there are even more modulation sources. Just use the help to get info about them. In the next tutorial, we'll talk about voicing.